haven't really seen the Wednesday night service on there. Uh, we just put it on uh, Facebook Live. It wasn't recorded. I don't think it was, even the audio was recorded on that. No. Um, and uh, but it was just a, a quick challenge, and, and uh, um, I enjoyed enjoyed that time. Uh, but uh, last time we were together. Uh, by the way, if you need a copy of the lesson, raise your hand. We're in uh, the uh, series, The Blessed Christian Life, and we're looking at lesson uh, number three, The Reward for Obedience. So if you need a copy of that, raise your hand. Uh, I know there's a few folks we've got some right here in the middle, uh, some over here on the side, so uh, uh, you can get that. Uh, we uh, appreciate that. We're on page number four, uh, and uh, uh, I'm not sure where it'll be back here, Timothy. Just kind of look around there. It should be... Uh, uh, Blessed Christian Life, Lesson 3, the Reward for Obedience. And I believe I handed out, uh, last time we were together with this lesson, I handed out page 5 and 6. Is that correct? Already handed that out? Okay. Uh, so if you can find uh, page 3 and 4, 5 and 6 for sure, and page 4 and 2, maybe uh, under uh, notes if you want to try and help them real quick, like that, I appreciate that. And I uh, get those handed out. Um, we we're talking about uh, the Word of God and uh, how it's important to obey uh, God's Word. And uh, looking at Psalm uh, chapter number 19, uh, there's some uh, uh, things that are said about God's Word and uh, uh, what we ought to do. And, uh, uh, you know, they're uh, there for us and they help to us, uh, but we ought to keep them. Uh, you know, it says in uh, uh, Psalm chapter number 19, and I'm going to read uh, verses 7 through uh, about uh, uh, 11, and or I guess verse number 12 even, and uh, uh, it says there, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul, the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise and simple. Then uh, uh, the stat statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart, the commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Here the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, and uh, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. More by them as I serve the Lord, and in keeping of them there is great reward. If you can understand his errors, cleanse thou me from the secret uh, faults. And uh, we're talking about how uh, they are powerful, uh, they are plain, uh, they are pleasing, they are pure, uh, and uh, uh, they are permanent, uh, they are precious, and uh, they're preventative. And, and then we talked about uh, the meaning of keeping the commandments. Uh, it means uh, seeking them. We uh, talked about uh, when we got to uh, get into the Word of God, you can only find them uh, by seeking them out uh, of God's Word. And uh, then we talked about, uh, you know, seeking all of them. You know, it's not going to be an uh, overnight thing. You know, you're not going to find all, you know, uh, one day just open up your Bible and find all the, uh, you know, things that God wants you to obey uh, in one night. Um, and it's as you grow uh, spiritually, uh, maybe we talked about this uh, uh, some time ago, we talked about everybody begins uh, spiritually uh, as an infant, and then we ought to grow spiritually from there. And uh, uh, you know, if we're uh, not growing, then there is a problem. But, but uh, uh, it is going to take a, a lifelong occupation. Um, and uh, uh, we ended with uh, letter C, page number four, letter C is where we ended. Yeah, we're going to pick there the letter D, uh, page number four uh, in the lesson uh, here in just a moment. Uh, before we do, let's go to the Lord in prayer and uh, uh, bless the blessing on this time together. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank and praise you for all that you do for us. Lord, I pray that you'll bless uh, your word and bless uh, each of your, uh, uh, your people here, Lord, that uh, you would help us to be attentive, help us to listen and and, uh, Lord, grasp these things that we talk about here tonight, Lord. I pray that you'll uh, be glorified in all that's said and done. We'll be sure to give you all praise and glory for it in advance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. By the way, if you have a, a question or a comment, uh, don't be afraid to raise your hand. I may try to finish a thought or a sentence, uh, but uh, keep your hand up uh, and, uh, uh, you know, until I call on you, and I'll get to you as quickly as possible. Uh, we, we talked about it means uh, seeking them, of course, uh, seeking, uh, it means seeking uh, them all. And then uh, the letter D there, it means obeying them. It means obeying them. You know what? Uh, uh, one of the things that uh, uh, God wants us to simply do is obey. You know, uh, there's a song called Trust and Obey. You know, I like that song. Trust and obey, or there's no other way. 
to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Amen. God does want us to obey Him and uh, uh, learn to trust Him. And, and uh, you know, you are not only to find them, but then to do them. You know, uh, uh, you know, it's one thing to know. Uh, we talked about this uh, uh, a while back. You know, uh, uh, it's one thing to know what uh, the Bible says. It's another thing to actually do what the Bible says. Amen. And uh, look with me, if you will, at John chapter number two. I would keep your finger there in the psalm, by the way. We'll come back to it here in just a moment. But John chapter number 2, and uh, notice in verse number 5. John chapter number 2 and verse number 5. This is uh, uh, Mary, uh, by the way, speaking to uh, uh, some servants. Uh, says there, his mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you... Notice those next two words, do it. You know, Nike doesn't have anything on, uh, on, you know, on the Word of God. They don't have a, uh, I know they have, uh, I think they have a, uh, uh, a monopoly on that, uh, you know, just do it. But uh, I'll guarantee you, God came up with it first, amen? Uh, and that's what he was saying there. Hey, whatever uh, he commands you to do, do it. You and I have to get to the point where we learn to uh, say, okay, Lord, uh, this is what you told me to do. I'll do it. I'll obey it. And uh, uh, by the way, if you can't learn to obey in the small things, you're never going to learn to obey in the big things. That goes uh, even for you teenagers, young people here. And uh, learn to obey uh, no matter what. Look in uh, Acts chapter number 9. Acts chapter number 9. And in Acts chapter number 9, uh, picking up there in verse number 6, notice what it says there. Acts chapter number 9 and verse number 6. He, trembling and astonished, and I said, Lord, notice that next phrase, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? You know, uh, God wants us to have the attitude like uh, uh, Saul or Paul there did, and, and uh, uh, he wants us to have the attitude of uh, like Samuel, you know, here am I, send me, you know, Lord, what would you have me to do? I'll do anything you want me to do. And, and uh, by the way, God will never, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you something here, you need to listen carefully to this. God will never tell you to do something contrary to His Word. Amen? He'll never tell you to do something contrary to His Word. If, if, if it's going against God's Word, I'm going to tell you now, God did not tell you to do it. Amen? And uh, um, I've, I've heard people say, you know, uh, God told me to kill this person. Uh, you know, it was on the news. What, what was that uh, recently here? Uh, God told me to do this. And I'm like, no, uh, that wasn't, you know, maybe the, uh, the God, you know, uh, uh, of this uh, world, Satan, amen, uh, but not uh, the God of heaven. He never, uh, he would never tell somebody to do that. And then look at James chapter number one. James chapter number one. And notice there in verse number uh, 22. James chapter number one and verse number 22. Notice what he says there. But be doers of the word and what? Not hearers only deceiving your own selves. And I'm going to go a little bit uh, further on. Uh, I know it's in your lesson, just verse number 22, but notice what he said there also. For if any, may, uh, any be a hearer of the word, verse 23, and not a doer, he's like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, or looking at himself in a mirror. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. You know what? Uh, you need to realize, hey, uh, you have to be a doer of the word, not just a hearer of it. You know, I mentioned this uh, toward the end of the lesson, last time we were together. Uh, I said, you know what, uh, there's uh, uh, 52 uh, Sunday school lessons, 52 morning, uh, Sunday morning messages, and 52 uh, Sunday night messages, and 52 uh, Wednesday night either lessons or preaching, and, and uh, that's a lot of uh, messages, lessons, uh, sermons, all those things that we can hear, amen, and we can hear what is being said, but if we're not doing anything, it's not going to change our life. You have to be willing to say, okay, Lord, yep, I hear it. Uh, yep, you're speaking to me. And, and uh, by the way, uh, if we have the attitude, the Lord, uh, would you speak to my heart? Uh, we'll, uh, it'll help us because then we're, we'll be sitting there saying, well, you know, that's for, uh, that's for Tom or, you know, that's for Brother Jake or, you know, that's for uh, uh, Brother Peter or that's for Trevor. And that's not for me, amen. That's for everybody else, but not me. And, 
And uh, but our attitude needs to be, Lord, what what would you uh, have me to do, Lord? Uh, how would you, uh, uh, you know, desire to speak to me? And, and uh, so it means obeying them. So the meaning of keeping the commandments, it means seeking them, and it means seeking them all. And, uh, not just going to happen overnight. And uh, you got to look for them, but uh, then you keep looking for them. Then obeying them, uh, not just uh, hearing uh, and knowing about them uh, and seeing them, but uh, actually doing them. Then it also means uh, there in uh, your lesson there, uh, number four, uh, page number four, letter E, it means obeying them promptly. It means obeying them promptly. You know, uh, uh, one of the things that my dad uh, really, uh, uh, he always said, son, if you, uh, delayed uh, obedience is, is disobedience. And uh, he really uh, drove it into me and, and uh, taught me a principle, and, and that is obeying right away. Amen? And uh, uh, one of the things that uh, is, you know, we expect, I guess, of our children, those of you that have children, uh, you expect your children to obey right away, don't you? Amen? Hey, go take out the trash. You know, you don't want them taking out tomorrow. Uh, you don't want them to wait, you know, a week from today. Amen. You want them to take the trash out now. Amen. Uh, you uh, you say go clean your room. It's not you know multiple choice. Amen. <laughs> it means go clean your room now. Amen. And uh, uh, sometimes we uh, we expect that of our children, don't we? Why could not God expect that of us? Why can't He expect us to obey? promptly. You know what happens a lot of times though? This is what we do and I, I've been guilty of it uh, in the past uh, years ago I remember uh, sitting in the pew and, and uh, thinking oh if I go forward though during the, 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 during the invitation somebody's going to think and you know as I'm praying there somebody's going to be thinking that I have a problem with this sin that pastor just preached on. And that isn't always necessarily true by the way. I would encourage you, if God's speaking your heart, and, and this, and what I would do, and, and I'm justified in my mind, though I'd sit there and I'd say, I know what I'll do. If I go forward, uh, you know, somebody will think that I have a problem with this, and, but I'll do it when I get home. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll take care of it when I get home. That's, that's what I would rationalize and think in my, in my mind and, and think, well, you know, uh, uh, it'll be all right. And, and uh, you know, by the way, it's never all right. <laughs> don't don't delay. Uh, don't put it off. Just say, okay, Lord, uh, I'll obey. I'll do it now. And, and uh, uh, God wants us to obey right away. Amen. Uh, and uh, uh, there was a song, uh, oh, Patch the Pirate sang it. Uh, I will obey the first time I'm told. I will obey right away. Never asking why. Never with a sigh. I will obey right away. Amen. God desires that we obey and obey right away and follow and do what, he, uh, do what he wants us to do. Notice real quick, like with me, if you will, Psalm uh, 119. Psalm 119. Don't you notice something here? Psalm 119. And uh, notice with me verse number 60. Psalm 119 and verse number 60. Verse number six zero. It says there, I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. I made haste. No, uh, why are you hurrying? Hopefully to obey uh, uh, the God's commandments. Amen. Hopefully you're not delaying and saying, well, you know, I'll, I'll do it tomorrow. You know, I'll start, you know, by the way, uh, I would encourage you this. Uh, anytime the Lord tells you to do something, don't say, I'll start tomorrow. Do it today. Amen. Uh, it'll be more helpful to you and, and beneficial to you if you just say, hey, I'll obey right away, and then I'll do it now and, and uh, not delay. But then uh, uh, not only is uh, keeping the commandments uh, uh, means uh, seeking them, means uh, seeking them all, and not just, uh, uh, you know, just for a little bit, uh, not overnight, but, uh, for a lifetime, it means uh, obeying them, and, and uh, we need to find them, but then obey them. Then uh, it means obeying them promptly, but something else it means there, page number five, letter F there. Uh, it means delighting in obeying. It means delighting in obeying. You know, I have to be honest. Uh, there were not times that I delighted in obeying when my dad would say, hey, son, go take out the trash. There were times uh, I would, uh, and I know these guys never, ever do this, all right? Never. But mumble and grumble under their breath. 
why do I have to do this? I have another brother, I have two older sisters. Why is it always me that has to take out the trash? Amen? Why is it always me that has to do the dishes? Oh, you know, it's just terrible. And I, I'm not the only one that eats out of the dishes. Why can't somebody else eat, you know, uh, wash the dishes once in a while? And, uh, you know, uh, uh, you all, maybe my kids are the only ones that are doing this, amen? Or I was the only one that did this, but, but uh, uh, <laughs> um, uh, you know, we, we need to realize that God wants us to, uh, uh, you know, not to uh, complain about it, but delight in it. This means having the right heart attitude while obeying God's word. You know what? Uh, it's like this. If you, uh, if you had a child that, uh, um, you know, you said, hey, I want you to sit down. And uh, they said, okay, I'm going to sit down on the outside, but on the inside I'm standing up. And they have a seat. You know, if they're telling you that, it means that they have a heart problem. Amen? You understand what I'm saying here? Lord, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to obey you, but... I don't want to obey. And I just want you to know, Lord, if you said to sit down, I'm just going to be standing up on the, on the inside, inside my heart. I'm standing up, just so you know. The Lord says, no, no, no. It's the heart attitude. I want you to notice some things here. You know, uh, look at me in Psalm 112. Psalm 112. I want you to notice in verse number 1, Psalm 112. Notice what it says there. It says, Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. You know, the thing that we uh, have to get to, uh, to a point in our life that we learn to do is delight in obeying. You know, uh, I think a lot of times Christians think, that, well, if I obey, then I'm going to be suppressed, and, and uh, you know, it's just going to be a burden to me. And, and no, when you obey, it becomes a delight uh, to your heart. You know, uh, uh, I would say probably my wife, my wife was a, uh, uh, a more obedient child than I was. I'll be the first <laughs> to admit that, all right? Uh, but one of the things that she wanted to do is that she, Miss Naomi, wanted to uh, uh, please her dad. And uh, so she would obey because she knew that if she disobeyed, it disappointed her dad. You know, when we look at it like that, remember we have a father-child uh, relationship uh, with God, amen? And I don't know about you, but I don't want to be a disappointment to my heavenly father. I don't want to. I don't want to sit there and say, "Well, I I, I uh, almost obeyed you, Lord." You know what? Uh, you know it's like that saying, "Almost uh, counts in horseshoes and hand grenades." Amen. <laughs> well, I almost obeyed you, Lord. Well, okay, then you still didn't obey, right? Isn't that the truth? Well, well, I I I, I was really close to obeying. Well, you still disobeyed then, amen. We got to get to the point where we say, "Okay, Lord, I, I'm going to uh, obey and, and delight in obeying, have the right heart attitude." I want you to notice uh, what it says in Psalm chapter number one. Psalm chapter number one. Notice what it says here in verse number two. First, he's talking about uh, uh, verse number one. He says, "Blessed is the man that walketh not in the uh, counsel of the ungodly." Or standeth in the way of sinners, or sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But notice what he says here, verse number 2, Psalm chapter 1, verse 2. two. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. You know, the word of God ought to be a, uh, our meditation. That doesn't, mean, that doesn't mean we sit there in a corner and own, you know, that kind of a thing. Or, uh, you know, it's talking about as we read the word of God, we begin to meditate. You know, we begin to think about it. You know what? Uh, uh, the word meditation has a connotation of uh, what cows do. Uh, cows, uh, if you are familiar with cows, cows have four stomachs. And uh, uh, what they do is they first chew uh, uh, the grass or whatever they're eating, alfalfa, and they, uh, they swallow it down. And then uh, a little bit later they regurgitate it up. 
and they began to maul it over and chew it on it again. And then they swallowed down in the second stomach, and, and then they regurgitated it up, and, and then they uh, uh, chew it some more, and then it goes down to the third stomach, and then they regurgitate it up, and, and, uh, and then the fourth, and so on and so forth. What, God, what, he, what he wants us to do is think about it, not just, uh, you know, not just read it, you know, reading the Bible in the morning to, you know, well, check that off. You know, I got my Bible reading done. I'm done for the day. But he wants us to mull it over and think about it and dwell upon it, amen, to the point where we begin to delight in it. His delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Where it begins to uh, really take effect in our heart and our life. Where it begins to influence us in, in our decision making, and it influences us and how we uh, uh, respond to others and influences us and how we uh, uh, conduct ourselves. You know, uh, these are some great truths uh, here in, in just those uh, uh, couple of verses, but it would be good for us to keep uh, Deuteronomy chapter number 5 and verse number 29. Turn there with me. Uh, Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, uh, Leviticus. Uh, I'm sorry, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. There we go. Uh, get, get in the right uh, uh, order there. Deuteronomy chapter number 5, and notice with me, if you will, verse number uh, 29. Deuteronomy chapter number 5, and verse number 29. It says there, all oh, that there were such an heart in them, that they would fear me, and keep all my commandments always, that it might be well with them, and with their children forever. You know, God desires that we would have an obedient heart, have the right heart attitude. When when God says, "Hey, I want you to obey," it, uh, you know, we ought to delight in it, uh, and it does affect our attitude. By the way, you ever seen this? When somebody has a bad attitude, it affects everybody else around them. It affects them, but it affects everybody else around them. Oh, I've seen that so so often. You know what? You think about this. Uh, adults first. I'm going to talk to you. You think about this. If you have the wrong heart attitude, your children are watching you, and they're going to follow your example. If you're like, oh, I don't want to obey that. You think I'm going to obey that? Look, God's just trying to maybe teach you something, amen? Maybe God's trying to teach you a lesson to, to help you in, in an area in your life that you, you need to learn yet. But do you know what? Uh, it's good for us to keep this in our heart and say, oh, Lord, help me to have a heart that I would fear the Lord and, and keep your commandments and, and that it might be well with me and with my children. Amen. Uh, Lord, help me to obey you and that it would affect my children or those that I have influence on. By the way, uh, some of you uh, are single and uh, nothing wrong with that. But think about this. You have influence in some people's lives. How, are, how is your obedience to the Lord influencing others? Are, are you setting a good example that others could say, hey, you know, they're following the Lord. They're obeying the Lord. I'm going to follow that example and uh, uh, watch God bless. You know, it's important uh, to keep God's word, to, to learn to keep his commandments, dear Christian, with all your heart. It's so important for every single Christian to say, okay, Lord, help me to obey your commandments. Help me to obey your word uh, daily and on a consistent basis. So uh, it means delighting and obeying. You know, uh, uh, first of all, we talked about how uh, we uh, uh, we saw there the, the keeping of the commandments there, number, uh, Roman number one there, uh, the keeping of the commandments. And then we saw the meaning of the keeping of the commandments, Roman number uh, Roman numeral uh, number two. And then Roman numeral uh, three there, uh, the rewards for keeping the commandments. The rewards for keeping the commandments. Now, you know, uh, this is not a... Uh, um, you know, health and wealth uh, kind of a, a thing. It's not a, you know, you do good and everything good will happen to you, all right? That's not a prosperity gospel. But there are principles in God's word. When we obey God's principles, there are rewards for them. You know, it's like this. Uh, 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 I don't know if you uh, parents have ever done this, and, and you can condemn me later uh, uh, for doing this, but every once in a while I bribe my children uh, you know, hey, uh, you guys clean this up. We'll go out to eat. You know, uh, and uh, boy, lick these split, everything gets clean. Amen. Uh, or hey, we'll go out for ice cream and, and uh, something like that. Uh, I don't do it all the time. You know, and so don't uh, don't condemn me. Don't throw stones yet. Uh, you can do it after the service. All right, we got got to wait until the service is done. Then you can take me out back and stone me. But but uh, the rewards. Uh, we, when we come to the reward for obedience, God gives special blessings to those that obey. His word. 
You know what? Uh, it's important that all of us uh, obey God's word, but there are rewards for uh, obeying his, uh, his word. So what are these rewards? Uh, uh, first of all, uh, letter B there, long life. Long life. It does not mean that if you obey God's word, you know, you're going to live to 120. All right? First of all, I don't know that I want to live to 120. Amen? Uh, I'd probably be senile and death. Uh, my wife said, you know, we're going to be a funny old couple. I said, why? She goes, you can hardly hear. And, and uh, uh, you get, sometimes you get forgetful and things like that. And, and uh, you're going to forget who I am and, and you can't hear me anyways. And I'm going to be talking to you and, and uh, you know, I'm going to be listening and you know, things like that. But, but uh, uh, there is a promise uh, of long life. I want to show you something here in God's word. Uh, can, can obedience, by the way, affect one's length of days? As a general principle, if we seek to live in the will of God and obey his laws, then our days will be lengthened. But if we break his laws by living careless, intemperate, uh, self-led lives, then our days may be shortened. You know what? Uh, uh, I have seen where uh, uh, people just uh, disobey what God uh, has for them. And uh, I've seen God uh, you know, uh, literally strike somebody dead. Uh, there was a, uh, a missionary years ago. Uh, he uh, 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 came off the field and, and uh, uh, he had... Uh, came off the field, uh, I don't think uh, uh, it was God's will for him to come off the field and all that, and he told his wife, he said, I'm never going back to the field unless uh, God were to take all my children. <laughs> something had happened, I don't remember all the story, but uh, something had happened to uh, the one child, and uh, he was uh, rushing out to the vehicle, put his one child in the vehicle, and uh, as he was backing out, he did not see one of the other children. And he backed over the other child, took off, and the wife is standing out uh, in the uh, doorway, uh, saw this all happen. She dropped dead of a heart attack because of what had happened. And uh, the child he took to the hospital, of course, died uh, uh, when he got to the hospital. And, and then that was all of his family. You say, well, you know, would that have happened if he had obeyed God? Uh, I don't know, but I'm going to tell you this. Uh, I believe had he not said... Well, God has to take all my, my family before I'll obey him again. You know what? Uh, God may just uh, do something like that to get you to obey. I don't know about you, but I'd rather obey uh, right away, amen, and not have God take something uh, in order for, for me to get my attention. I want you to look at uh, some principles, though, here. Uh, look with me at Deuteronomy chapter number 32. Deuteronomy chapter number 32. In Deuteronomy chapter number 32, I want you to notice uh, with me verse number 46 and verse 47. Notice what he said there. And he said unto them, Set your hearts unto all the words which uh, I testify among you this day, which ye shall command your children to observe to do all the words of this law. For it is not a vain thing for you, because it is your life. And through this thing ye shall prolong your days in the land whither ye go over Jordan to possess it. You know, you think about this. Uh, often thought about, and I, I know uh, uh, the children of Israel, uh, God had told them, hey, uh, I want you to go out of Egypt. I want you to go into the promised land, possess the land. And uh, in the book of Numbers, they, of course, go in, they spy out the land, and, and they say, oh, man, there's giants in the land. We can't go. And and uh, you know the rest of the story. Uh, they ended up wandering around in the wilderness for 40 years. But you think about this, uh, some of those people, they may have died right away. There may be some of them, uh, maybe God allowed some of them, the Bible doesn't tell us how they died. Uh, we just know that some of them you know, uh, died in the wilderness and, and they were buried in the wilderness. Some of them, maybe they died of heat stroke. You know, uh, uh, I don't know if ever, anybody ever here uh, at least have been close to having heat stroke or maybe have had heat stroke. Anybody ever had that? I know I've been close to it. You, know, you get a headache, you know, your head begins to pound, and, and uh, you begin to feel kind of lightheaded, and, and uh, you need to get in the shade immediately and get, uh, get some water and, and get your body temperature cooled down and all that. And, and uh, uh, it's a very serious thing. Uh, but I, I know uh, uh, people that have been young 
uh, that uh, died of heat stroke. Uh, older people that have died of heat stroke. I know, uh, uh, you know, there's people that have uh, died of exposure. You know, uh, they get cold at night, and, and could you imagine this in the desert? Uh, it can get very cold. Amen. Uh, we're talking about uh, temperatures where your body, uh, uh, you know, could have hyperthermia and things like that. And maybe there's some of them that died of hyperthermia. So oh, that isn't possible. <coughs> hey, we don't know. <laughs> Look. Uh, God could have easily said, hey, that's it. Could you imagine being the first one as they go out into the wilderness, being the first one that to die, you know? I've often thought about that. I was like, man, why? You know, uh, uh, there's uh, person number one of all these people that have to die off, amen? And, uh, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a sad thing, but, but you and I need to be willing to say, hey, Lord, here's a principle uh, that I'm going to follow, I'm going to obey. Uh, why? It's going to add some days to our life. Look at me, if you will, at uh, Proverbs chapter number 1. Uh, Pro I'm sorry, Proverbs chapter number 3. I said Proverbs 1. I meant Proverbs chapter 3. Verse number 1. There we go. Proverbs chapter number 3, verse number 1. I want you to notice some things here. Actually, you know, we're, I know in the lesson we only have verse 1 and 2, but I'm, I'm going to read a little bit further. I want to show you a couple other things that are all right you know, within that uh, context there. And uh, uh, notice what he says there, verse number 1 and following. It says, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For the length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let thou mercy and uh, truth forsake thee, bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean on it to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. You know, uh, uh, there's a lot of things right there in those few verses that we talked about. Uh, it's going to be healthy for you, amen, to obey uh, uh, God's word. It's going to help you. Uh, uh, you know, God's going to be able to direct you and guide you uh, where you need to be. Uh, it's going to, uh, uh, it says there, for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. You know, uh, I don't know about you, but there's a lot of uh, unrest in life, isn't there? Uh, a lot of things, you know, even in this world, uh, people are unrestful about things. And, and uh, But, you know, you and I as Christians, we can have peace in our heart no matter what's going on. Uh, you know, uh, I, I've seen where uh, Christians uh, respond in a, uh, in a very peaceful manner, and even when, uh, you know, they're facing tragedy. You know, uh, uh, yeah, why? Because God gives a peace in our heart. Uh, that, uh, you know, is beyond understanding, beyond human understanding. And uh, uh, that's exactly what God can do. That he'll give us uh, a long life when we obey. So that's one of the uh, rewards uh, for obeying the Lord. So number one, a uh, long life. Number two, uh, another way of, uh, you know, reward, I'm sorry for uh, keeping the commandments, is protection. Protection. I don't know, anybody... Uh, uh, Remember the storm we had, uh, uh, this was just, uh, when was that, Broadway, and, uh, uh, second week in uh, uh, June, June something, whatever it was, huh? June 14th, 14th, 15th, something like that. It was a Saturday, and uh, that storm came through, anybody remember that, just recently here? And uh, I only remember it very vividly because uh, we were at the Broadway and at Festival Foods over on the west side. And uh, the wind, you know, we, we knew that there was some rain coming and, and such. We could see it off in the distance. Uh, but uh, uh, we were in this little brock wagon. Uh, it's a little shed. It reminds me kind of an ice fishing shack. It's kind of the size of it. We've never seen one. And uh, uh, so it's not real, real large, but, uh, you know, enough to at least have some standing room in there. And uh, uh, we, at first, uh, we had some umbrellas. And we were kind of protecting... Uh, keeping the rain from coming in. Then all of a sudden, uh, the wind shifted, and I saw that wind go straight across. And I was like, let's close this right now. I told my son Timothy, and, and uh, it was uh, Timothy and I, and, and uh, well, so we had Shauna, and, and uh, Margie, and Mrs. Herrick, if I remember right, in there. And uh, uh, I told Timothy, I said, let's close this right now. Literally, as we're trying to push the, uh, uh, the uh, window closed, I could feel that wind just beating against it, and, and I was listening for hail, and, 
And uh, uh, I was like, okay, if we, uh, and I even told Mrs. Herrick, I said, if I start here in Hale, I said, we're running inside. I said, we'll, we'll make that mad dash, you know, for uh, a few uh, feet and get inside and, and uh, get out of this weather. But, uh, uh, you know, even just being in that little uh, shack there, we at least had protection, protection from the wind, uh, protection from the rain, and, and uh, yeah, some of the water came in and such, but uh, um, at least I wasn't, you know, we weren't getting drenched or pelted, you know, and, and uh, uh, each time I opened that side door, man, the wind would blow in, I'm like, oh, no, it's not, uh, not died down yet, amen, and, and uh, but you know, you think about this, when we obey God's word, there was protection for us. There is a, a wonderful promise given to us in Ecclesiastes chapter number 8 and verse number 5. Turn there with me if you will. Ecclesiastes, right after the book of Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter number 8. And I want you to notice verse number 5. It's a great principle here. Whoso keepeth the commandment shall feel no evil thing, and a wise man's heart discerneth both time and judgment. You know what? Uh, uh, does it mean that if you do good, there'll be never anything bad that will ever happen to you? No. Because we have the book of Job that tells us, uh, you know, Job didn't do anything wrong. He wasn't, uh, uh, you know, he was one that eschewed the evil. He did what was right and obeyed God and uh, feared the Lord, the Bible tells us, and all those things. And, and uh, yet he lost uh, all of his uh, possessions. He lost uh, uh, all of his children. And uh, even lost his health. And, and uh, yet through it all, he still gave God glory. And uh, he didn't go through any of that uh, because he was doing something bad. He went through all of that because God said to Satan, he said, Hast thou considered, considered my servant Job? You know what? Uh, uh, would God be able to uh, say that about us, by the way? Has thou considered my servant and put your name there? Wow. Kind of puts things in perspective, doesn't it? But you know, there is protection. When we're uh, uh, obeying God, doing what we're uh, supposed to be doing, there is protection. I want you to think of this. When, when you're obeying the Lord, uh, it's kind of like uh, being in a, uh, a building like this or, you know, having a, you know, a shed or uh, an umbrella or something like that where uh, uh, you're out of the direct line, if you will, of, of the storm, all right? Uh, I, I guess more, maybe it would be better to uh, picture, if you would, a, a little shed or, or maybe a, 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 some kind of pavilion or something where, uh, uh, yeah, it may hit you once in a while, uh, but it, it's not going to drench you, all right? Uh, yeah, it may uh, uh, come down hard, but you're not going to be, uh, you know, soaked. It's not going to hit everything that you have, all right? Uh, and that's, that's the way with obeying God uh, and obeying His Word. Uh, you know, and as I mentioned in there, uh, it, uh, it does not mean that uh, nothing in your life will go wrong if we obey God, but it will mean uh, that Romans 8.28 will be fulfilled in our experience. I want you to notice that, and we'll have to stop because of time here. We just saw the, the uh, time, and uh, I want you to notice there, Romans chapter number 8, in verse number 28. Romans chapter number 8, verse number 28. Notice what it says there. And we know that all things, <coughs> excuse me, we know that all things work together for good, to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. By the way, if you want to be in God's will, it may mean you have to go through some trials like Job. Amen? If you want to be in God's will, it may mean uh, you have to go through uh, some storms like the disciples did. Remember when the disciples were in the boat? Guess what? Jesus told them to get in the boat. He told them to go to the other side. They were in the boat on purpose. Amen? And yet, while they're in the boat, the winds uh, grew and, and the waves beat against them. Remember, they're trying to row to shore, and, and then Jesus comes out to them on the water. What was he trying to do? He's trying to teach them th some faith. I don't know about you, but I think of Peter. Peter was, uh, you know, uh, people uh, talk about uh, Peter, you know, uh, he shouldn't have got out of the boat, you know, he should have been like the other 11 and stay in the boat. You know what? Peter was a pretty bold guy. 
I don't know about you, but uh, I think if I saw Peter walking on water, I think I would have just said, hey guys, uh, Peter's walking on water. I don't know about you, let's try it. Hey Lord, can we come up to you too? Amen. I think I would have been daring enough to say, hey, let's try this, man. It looks pretty cool. You know, uh, he's just walking on water. There's a storm going on. And, uh, but you know, you think about this. God allowed them to go through that storm to increase Peter's faith. And now, even to this day, it affects us. Amen? And we can say, hey, yeah, there can be storms in our life, but we can be a water walker. Amen? We don't have to allow the, the waves to overwhelm us, uh, the waves of the, uh, uh, of, of the storms to overwhelm us, but we can, we can trust the Lord and say, Lord, help me to walk on the waters of, of this storm and, and help me rise above this storm. Amen? Why? God wants us to learn to trust Him. And there may be uh, uh, some things that we can learn uh, from that. We're going to have to stop here because of time. As, as I said, I just saw, saw the time. But God does want us to uh, uh, realize that all things work together uh, for good. And God desires to get good from our life. Amen. And uh, so I, I want to I stop there, as I said before.